Ancient castles are home to a treacherous past and terrifying modern mysteries. Strange sounds, bizarre visions, and nightmares that are said to come back again and again. Truth or Scare is daring to enter the haunted castles of England. Don't you just love a good ghost story? In England, one out of every seven people say they've seen a ghost. Lots of these strange sightings happen in and around historic castles. They say the spirits won't leave this world, and they refuse to move on to the next. The English countryside is known around the world for its pastoral beauty. But on its ancient estates, there are castles that conceal an ugly history. Ghostly apparitions from beyond the grave. The Cumbrian region is in the northwestern part of England. And for hundreds of years, Munchester Castle has been a part of the landscape. A silent witness. To wicked deeds. Visitors have been frozen in their tracks by an unexplained sound. A strange thumping comes from the old palace stairs, when no one seems to be there. The spirit of this man might have been the cause, Tom Skelton. In the 1500s, he was part of the castle staff, the Pennington family's last court jester. They say he knew Shakespeare and was the model for the fool in King Lear. They even called him Tom Fool, the inspiration for the word tomfoolery. In 1585, Hellwise Pennington, the daughter of the castle lord, started a scandal. She was a noblewoman with a rebellious streak and a strict father who refused to tolerate disobedience. Sir William had arranged for her to marry the son of another powerful family. But no one could tell Hellwise who to love. Her heart belonged to a common carpenter from the village. Even though they tried to keep their romance a secret, they couldn't fool. Tom Fool. Sir William was furious. He ordered his jester to break up the happy couple by whatever means necessary. Tom Skelton came up with a plan. He invited the carpenter up to Muncaster, pretending Hellwise wanted to see him. A simple lie that the young man couldn't resist. Tom promised that Hellwise would be there soon. He offered the carpenter a drink of a potent cider, and then another. When Hellwise Pennington's boyfriend passed out, Tom reached into the carpenter's tool bag. He found a chisel and a mallet, and then he ended the man's life. The loyal servant had stopped Hellweiss's relationship dead in its tracks. But some say you can still hear the carpenter in the halls of the castle to this day. Over 400 years later, Patrick Pennington can't deny that he has heard the echoes of Muncaster's gruesome history. I thought it was rather silly, the story, but then, when we'd been here a little while, we used to work terribly hard, started in the office at six in the morning, and after tea, 
I would walk across the hall sometimes, and there were footsteps used to follow me. And I, I've tried it with sort of a shoes that didn't make a noise, but I always heard the <laughs> behind me. Tom Skelton lost his life a few years later when he drowned in the cold, dark waters of the River Esk. Even the master trickster couldn't fool fate. Today, every thump in the night leaves the castle's new inhabitants to wonder, did he ever really leave Muncaster Castle? <laughs> Which of England's famous queens is reportedly still haunting the halls of Sudley Castle? Find out next on Truth or Scare. The Gaggle is back on Discovery Kids. Our next stop is Sudley Castle. Over the years, Sudley has seen more than its share of suffering. Some people say that intense emotional forces could have left an impression on the castle stones. An imprint so strong that they believe they see ghosts walking through the halls. Sudley Castle can be found in the southwest of England. The locals say it is home to the country's most powerful, unearthly presence. Employees have heard inexplicable sounds in the castle and smelled apple-scented perfume. The strangest stories are about the appearance of a tall, beautiful woman in a long green dress. The lady of the house Catherine Parr. Catherine was known for her intelligence and artistic talent. She was also exceptional for being nearly six feet tall with stunning auburn hair. She's famous for being King Henry VIII's sixth wife and his last. When Henry VIII died in 1547, Catherine married this man, Thomas Seymour. He was an ambitious man, desperate to climb the political ladder. A man who would do anything for power. When Catherine accepted his proposal, he'd gotten what he'd wanted. They moved here to Sudley. In just a few months, at the age of 35, Catherine was pregnant. In the 16th century, this must have seemed like a miracle, as women that age hardly ever had children. The castle buzzed with excitement and celebration as everyone prepared for the birth. <laughs> then, tragedy struck. Catherine gave birth to a baby girl named Mary, but all was not well. The new mother came down with a fever. A week later, she passed away. Everyone at Sudley Castle was in shock. Everyone, that is except her husband. Instead of grieving for his wife, Thomas Seymour left his newborn daughter and moved on to London. He proposed marriage to a string of other royal women, but it was turned down by everyone. Eventually, he was beheaded for treason. No one knows what happened to little Mary. But as for her mother, some claim that Queen Catherine's spirit is not resting in peace at all. Employees of the castle have allegedly witnessed the return of the queen. Like the maid, Margaret Parker. Morning. One day when Margaret was cleaning, she thought she saw a woman standing at the window. She assumed it was one of the guests, a visiting artist but the artist had just come down from the nursery, so it couldn't have been her. But then, who was that at the window? 
Many in the castle believe it was the image of the former queen. If it is Catherine Parr haunting her old home, she doesn't bother anyone. People who live and work here consider her a friend. No, no, Katie. After she died, Catherine's daughter Mary disappeared from the history books. To this day, no one knows what became of the unfortunate orphan. Some speculate that after 400 years, mother and daughter are still trying to find each other, here at Sudley Castle. The 19th century housekeeper who ruled Sudley Castle with an iron fist, and reportedly, still does. Next on Truth or Scare. We'll be back on Discovery Kids. <laughs> the gaggle is back on Discovery Kids. Sudley Castle is the scene of many so-called ghost sightings. Some say even the spirit of a loyal servant still shows up for work. After lying abandoned for almost 200 years, Sudley Castle came to life again in the 1800s. It was restored and renovated, and new owners moved in. Human residents, and some say a few roommates from the other side. Some feel a restless Victorian soul is responsible for the latest sightings at Sudley. Today, Elizabeth Ashcombe owns the castle. She heard the story of Janet from her husband, Mark Dent Brocklehurst. Well, um, her name is Janet, and she was the housekeeper here for many, many years. She was here for 50 years. My late husband, Mark, used to tell me stories about her when he came home from school, that she was still here, and everyone's still terrified of her, and she was still ruling the roost with the iron glove. And so that's why I think she's still here. She just won't give it up. As housekeeper, Janet, along with the butler, was responsible for managing the rest of the staff. Together, they made sure that everything ran like clockwork. There were very strict social rules about how and when boys and girls could interact with one another. And it was Janet's special mission to see that the boys and girls stayed in their own rooms. Janet would watch over the girls to make sure that nobody got into trouble. Even today, they say Janet still has the run of Sudley Castle. Young girls who come into the building seem to attract the housekeeper's attention. If you look behind you at the heavily gilded gold frame, you will find a picture. In 1993, a teenager was taking a guided tour of the castle. She told the story of an eerie encounter with something out of this world. Suddenly, she had a strange feeling. She said it was like a force telling her to go up the stairs. When she got to the top, She claims to have seen a vision of the past. Sudley's castle's current owner hasn't run into Janet herself, but she feels the grounds are definitely home to more than meets the eye. Sudley is, to me anyway, is, is just always been such a, had a wonderful atmosphere. And, you know, I've often been in the garden, but it's a particular time in the evening when the light is at a certain level and everything like that. And, there is this sense of timelessness here. Um, I can't really explain it, but one merges into it. And I think that all the people who've lived here, our presence is still somehow in this sense of timelessness. Two young princes are spotted playing in the Tower of London. 500 years after they died. 
next on Truth or Scare. On Discovery Kids. The Tower of London has been standing for almost a thousand years, watching over the United Kingdom through some of its darkest hours. What's in the Tower of London itself? Eternal reminders of torture and executions, and possibly the walking spirits of the victims themselves. The Tower of London has been a home to kings and their courts. There's an old saying, he who holds the tower holds the power. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the royal palace and fortress of Her Majesty's Tower of London. It looks so harmless now. It's easy to forget the tower's dark past. Centuries ago, the tower was used as a prison. Back then, it was the site of unspeakable torture and violent death. Hundreds of victims were subjected to the cruelty of the hot poker, the spikes of the Iron Maiden, and, in many cases, the executioner's axe. And some say the victims of these unspeakable horrors often reappear after death as ghostly apparitions. World War II, the Germans were bombing London, trying to destroy the docks and factories near the tower. Explosions rocked the city during an attack known as the Blitz. Total chaos reigned. At the tower gates, a terrifying vision was forming. As the legend goes, it was the autumn of 1940. A soldier was guarding the battlement. There was nothing in his military training to prepare him for these invading forces. Halt! Who goes there? Four men came walking out of the mist. Between them, they were carrying some kind of stretcher. The soldier reported that the strange group kept coming closer and closer. He said that they were carrying what looked like a body under a stained bloody blanket, and they were dressed just like sheriff's officers from the 14th century. Then they disappeared like the mist that had brought them. It's been said this was a vision of the tower's past crimes against humanity. And even more gruesome acts have been committed in other parts of the building. The Bloody Tower was the site of the ultimate tragedy. People talk about two young boys who have been seen playing here in the tower. Believers say that these are the spirits of two princes. Richard was nine and his brother Edward was 12 when they were victims of a shocking crime. Richard III was the boy's uncle. He was ambitious and hungry for power. Sometimes called England's favorite villain, Richard was cursed in a number of ways. His enemies described him as a jealous and malicious man, short and hunched over. Some even blame him for a string of unexplained deaths. The princess's father was King Edward IV, the ruler of England. When he passed away, the boys were put under Richard's protection. It was just the chance he'd been waiting for. The boys were the only thing keeping Richard from the throne. As long as they were alive, he could not become king. So the princes were locked in the bloody tower for their own safety, their uncle said. For months, the locals saw them playing around the tower and in their room. Then suddenly, in the fall of 1483, the tower was empty. Even today, no one can say exactly how the brothers disappeared. But with them gone, Richard was crowned King of England. Two skeletons were later found near the tower and identified as Edward 
and his brother, Richard. They were buried at Westminster Abbey. Their spirits, on the other hand, if the witnesses are correct, the souls of the young princess still play in the Tower of London. They seem to be hanging on to each other in this world as though they know they left it before their time. England's grand estates were home to more than royalty in their courts. Over the ages, they were also the setting for ruthless acts of violence and cruelty. Some believe the tortured souls who lost their lives will not move on to the next world. Of course, no one knows for sure if ghosts really do exist. But those who believe will continue to study the strange sights and sounds that haunt the ancient castles of England.